And the final, the so fifth point to this series is look beyond money to what qualities you are seeking. When we make money our source, what we're actually looking for are certain qualities in my life. If we work backwards and say, well, okay, forget. Forget the idea of money or wherever you think your abundance is. And instead, I want you to think of the qualities. What, what quality of life do you want? How do you want to feel? How do you want your daily life to look like? Do you want to feel valuable? Do you want to feel supportive? Do you want to feel calm? Okay, what is it that you're looking for? Once you can identify the qualities, you can start to magnetize those qualities to you directly. It's almost like saying, if this is a certain lifestyle that, is, that I think I want in order to be happy, sometimes, in a very measured way, you start living those qualities. See, the universe doesn't know any better. I call, I call it pretending. Make it up. <clears throat> Behave and act as if you have your ideal and then fill in the blank. Do it on a small scale. It's like a homeopathic medicine. You don't need a lot of it. Okay? I have talked to countless people who've said to me all my life, I had always seen myself doing this, or I'd put it up on my wall every day, or I had a picture because I loved airplanes, and right now I'm running a billion dollar organization with planes. Okay? See, they were looking for a feeling, a quality. And if you put that out there, don't limit how the universe wants to bring it to you. It might not bring you the money to, bring, to build that beautiful healing center you want to build, but it might find you a benefactor who sees the value of what you're doing and saying, here's a building, go do it. Right? You don't know. You just look for, where is my purpose here? How can I give? and at the same time stay open to receiving. Just like the inhale and the exhale. For every inhale, there's an exhale that goes with it. Does that make sense, people? Are you with me or are you all snoozing? There's a difference, in other words, between poverty and misery, you know that. One of my associates who traveled to India with me for several of our retreats, he was co-facilitating with his wife, he said the most amazing thing to me. Third day in India, we're going from Delhi to Agra to see the Taj Mahal. And he had been concerned when we were first going on a reconnaissance trip that he wouldn't be able to handle the um, poverty. Okay? And he was sitting in the front, uh, front uh, with the, the driver. He was in the front seat and his wife and I are in the back. And his name is Maynard. And Maynard said, um, I get it. And if you get to know Maynard, he gets a lot of things. Okay, so but his wife and I go, all right, Maynard, what do you get now? And like, we're ready for some smart ass remark, or, you know, he always had something, great sense of humor. I'll never admit it, although it's on t camera now. But um, he said, I get it. And we're like, what do you get? He goes, well, I've been looking around me the last three days. Uh huh. And what do you see? He says, I've seen poverty. I said, okay, well, yeah, I guess in Delhi and in some of the places we've witnessed poverty. I said, and, and so, therefore, he goes, well, hang on, let me finish. He always does things in two parts. He goes, yep, I get it. He says, I see, I have witnessed poverty around me. But what I also get is that while there is poverty in this country, in my opinion, he says, the true misery is in North America. Is in North America. Wow. Interesting thought. We are so afraid to witness poverty and we forget about our own misery. The people who have and don't have enough, right? People who want the newest next thing. The people who put things before family, before children. I don't know, just food for thought. But uh, if you have an argument with that one, I'll give you Maynard's number. He'd love to discuss it with you. So these are just a few thoughts I wanted to plant in this short time in your minds and challenge you to look at your lives, look at the lives of the people around you and determine for yourself. It has to be a personal journey. 
Don't take my word for it. Why should you? Let your own experience be your teacher. In this world, it's time that we started to find the inner guru and connected with that instead of making everybody and everything else our authority. As I said in the previous lectures, to know yourself is to know the universe. And that's true abundance, isn't it? That's where true peace comes from because there are no more doubts. Truth always stands up to doubting and questioning. It welcomes it. So doubt and question everything that has been said here, yet be open to consideration. Discuss it amongst yourselves. Follow it up. Buy my CDs. Oh, did I say that? Sorry, that was in, inside voice. Okay. This one has not been released on the market yet, but if you're on my nifty mailing list, I will let you know when this presentation is available. In case, like me, you need a remind-er. Okay?